Hello everyone and welcome to our When I Work demo training class and thanks for joining me today. My name is Angie and I'm the customer support manager here at When I Work. So today I'm going to show you how When I Work will make scheduling and communicating with your employees easier. I will also show you how When I Work puts the work schedule in your employees' pockets through text messaging and the mobile apps. So the first 15 minutes of this class will be the demo. Then once the demo is done, I'll spend the next 15 minutes answering any questions you have. So if you have questions during the demo, feel free to uh, leave them in the question box that's associated with the webinar. And then once I'm finished with the demo, I'll go through and try to get every question answered. Uh, I want to stay strict to our 30-minute time frame, so if I don't get to your question, I'll email you after the webinar and get it answered for you. Uh, so I'm going to get started now on the demo portion of this. So when you first log into your When I Work account, you're taken to the dashboard. The dashboard is a snapshot of what's going on right now with today's schedule. So you have today's schedule that appears here. Um, it'll show you all of the employees that are scheduled to work and it will also give you a filter of throughout the day as the hours go on so you have a continual update. So if you need to log in and quickly see who's working you can see that just by logging in and viewing the dashboard. Things needing your action and things awaiting actions from others. These are to help you um, view activity that's going on between you and your employees. So if you have employees who are requesting uh, time off or trading requests, you'll see these as pending and that's to let you and other managers know that you need to either approve or decline those requests for your employees. Uh, the things need awaiting actions from others mostly is mostly for your employees. This lets them know that when they create a request, it's waiting for someone to take care of it. So um, they're not left wondering what's going on with it, then they can clearly see a manager hasn't looked at it yet. Uh, so until a manager approves or declines requests, the employee is waiting to see uh, what goes on with that. I'm going to quickly walk you through the uh, steps you need to do to set up your account, and then I'm going to go through and show you how the scheduler and everything works. So the gear menu at the top right here, uh, this will take you to all of the sections you need to set up. So I'm going to take you to the employees page. The employees page is where you manage your staff. So you can add all of your employees through here. You can do a mass import from the tool section um, and selecting import employees. Or you can add them one at a time by selecting add employee. Uh, doing this, you can input their first and last name. If you include their email and mobile number, they will get receive an invite from us. So um, make sure that if you don't want them to receive invites yet, just leave those fields blank. You can add them later. We also have access privileges. So by default, your employees are set up as employees, meaning they can only log in and view the schedule and make requests. They can't actually uh, make any changes or see any private information about other employees either. Managers and supervisors, they both have access to manage schedules and manage employees. Managers, you can limit uh, some of their specific uh, actions that they can do and you can also limit them to specific locations if you're using the location feature. Manager can do anything in the account, work with the app settings, work with every location um, and every employee. So the manager is basically um, what you have all the capabilities to do. Next you'll want to make sure to take your employees to the positions and locations they belong to. This just helps our system to filter out qualified employees. Um, make, this is a location drop down. If you're using more than one location, this is where you need to take your employees. Next you can include their max hours week and hourly rates. These help you to uh, keep a uh, to schedule your employees according to the hours they can work. So that helps if you have part-time or full-time employees so you can make sure you stay between those hours. And then hourly rate helps you to view a labor forecasted um, so that you can make sure that you're staying within a budget when you're scheduling out your employees. And I'll show you how that looks more when I get to the scheduler section. So next you'll want to make sure to set up all of your positions. You can simply add a position by clicking add position. Give your position a name and then choose a color if you want to. The choosing colors will help you manage your schedule and get a better view of uh, position coverage for yourself. You can add as many positions as you and you can add as many positions as you need to. So the next section here is the location section. This isn't used by everyone. It's if you want separate departments being scheduled or you have actual separate locations. So you can add a location and input all the details here as well. Um, so again, make sure if you are using this feature, you do take your employees to the locations they belong to. Shift blocks 
is the most important feature, I think. This is just going to make your scheduling really quick for you. Um, so if you have shifts that you're using all the time to schedule, create them all in the shift block section. So you can add a shift block. You can insert the start and end time. There's another color code option for you there so you can keep things more organized for yourself. You can also include unpaid breaks, um, and that's going to uh, tabulate correctly with your hourly total that you're scheduling your employees. Um, take it to a position or a location if you need to and add as many shift blocks that you need to make your scheduling quicker. The next section here is our sites feature. This is another feature not used by everyone, but if you are scheduling your employees at job specific sites, this is the most handy feature you can set up. Um, some type of businesses using this are catering, ballet, construction, um, so businesses such as that. You, you can add as many sites as you need to. Again, add your site, give it a name, um, give it a color if you want to, and then if you input an address, it's kind of handy because it will give your employees a Google map that they can click on to get directions to the job site they're going to be working at for their shift. So once you have everything set up, you can go to the scheduler here. Now the scheduler is obviously the main feature of when I work. Uh, this is where you're going to do all of your scheduling for your staff. So I have a schedule set up for this week. I'm going to go to the tools section here and select clear schedule uh, so I can show you what it looks like working on a blank template. So this is my schedule for the week. I need to create it. I have some a green flag and a gray flag. I have a lot of time off going on um, with my employees for the week, so I can make sure to schedule accordingly. Um, so these flags in the upper right corner represent your employees' availability preferences. So your employees have the option to input hours they prefer to work and also hours they're unavailable to work. So if I click on Friday for Dave Johnson, it shows he prefers to work 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Um, so our system is going to filter out all the shift blocks that I have set up um, to let me know what shifts are going to work best with his preferred hours. So 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. is going to be the best fit for him, so I want to schedule him this shift. And with the gray flag, it means that they are asking for, that they're showing that they're unavailable. So if I click here for Karen on Wednesday, it's going to show she's unavailable from 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. Again, our system is going to filter out the shift blocks that will work best with this um, availability. So I have a few options I can choose from. I want her to work 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Um, that's going to work best with um, what she has chosen for her times. And I have that set up for her. You'll notice that adding shifts is as easy as clicking on a cell and choosing your shift blocks if you have them set up. Um, so I can choose a shift block. And then also, a uh, handy feature we have is our copy and paste feature. So if you want to use this shift over and over again throughout the schedule, you can click Control or Command on a Mac and select the shift. So I can quickly copy and paste it um, for the same employee. I can move it to another employee that's going to be working the shift. You'll notice as I'm moving it around that there's a uh, thumbs down and thumbs up. So that lets you know while you're moving the shift around who's qualified to work this shift and who's not. Um, so I want to make sure to have um, Dan work it because he's, he's um, tagged to work the front desk position. So if I'm adding a shift and using a shift block and I need to change it a little bit, that's perfectly fine. So maybe I want Karen to work on Friday from 4.30 to 10 p.m. I need to change the position she's working. Uh, so I can click on this edit pencil that's associated with the shift block. So doing this will allow me to edit any of the shift information I have included with this specific shift block. I can include an unpaid break. Maybe she gets a 0.5 or a half hour break. Um, I want to change her position, so she's going to be a coordinator for that day. We also have a repeat shift option. So if you want your shifts to repeat daily, weekly or biweekly or so on, um, you can choose that here by doing repeat. So maybe Kristen works 4.30 to 10 p.m. as a coordinator every week, um, and that ends, uh, we'll say, at the end of the year. Uh, so that's always going to show up on her schedule, so you don't have to continue to input the same shift week after week for her. So I'm going to create that, and that makes all the changes that I've created. You can also create a custom shift. So maybe I don't want to use any of my shift blocks. I can click custom shift here, and this is going to take me to the same shift editor pop-up. So I can include my start and end time. I can choose a color. I can do anything I need to do, and I can create that shift. 
If you want to save this shift as a shift block for later use, you can do that as well. Um, and so that's a nice handy way to create all of your shifts that you need to set up for your employees. So I'm going to move on to my next week. You'll notice that at the week I'm looking at, all the shifts have these hash lines through them. So the hash lines indicate that I'm working on an unpublished schedule. What that means is my employees can't actually view the schedule right now. So myself and my other managers or supervisors, we can all work on the schedule, um, approve it, make sure everything is set up correctly until we push it to our staff. So I have my schedule set up. It's exactly how I want it for next week. So I'm ready to let my staff know. So I can go to the Publish and Notify widget up here, and I can click on the arrow down. I can choose a date range, so maybe you create schedules two weeks out. So I can publish two weeks worth of my schedule out to my employees, or a, month, a month's worth, or however many weeks in advance you like your employees to have their schedule. Then I want to notify all my users. I can include a message like, new schedule is out. And then I'm going to publish my shifts. So when I publish them, You'll notice that all my shifts turn solid color. The publish um, will push out uh, text, email, and push notifications to your employees, letting them know what their shifts are, and also letting them know that they can log into the web or mobile apps to view the full schedule from there. So now my schedule is ready and set to go. I'm going to show you a couple of our other features we have. So when you started uh, setting up your account you could choose the color codes that I was describing before. So right now, this is our color code section up here. Right now the uh, color are assigned to the shift. So my 5 p.m. to 11 p.m. shifts are all in purple. My 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. are all in blue. So you can coordinate that however you like. I'm going to move the, to the position option here and this is going to show me all of my positions um, based on color so I can get a nice position coverage view. Um, I can see all the managers I have scheduled in purple. My team leaders are in this fuchsia color. And then we also have a position sorting option over to the left. So if I select manager, that's going to show me all of my, uh, my whole manager schedule. It's going to show me all my employees who can work as managers um, so I can quickly and easily make sure I have the correct coverage for these positions. I can also select more than one position if that's helpful for you. Um, so it's just a nice handy tool to view your position coverage to make sure you have the right amount of people scheduled. Next I'm going to talk about our open shift section. So at the top here is a green bar. This represents our open shifts. Open shifts come in handy if um, you need extra help. You need someone to come in quick to take over a shift. Um, so maybe I'm short on Wednesday the 13th. I can add a shift. I need, let's say, I need a manager to come in. I didn't schedule enough. So I can click on the manager um, shift block. Now if I click on this open shift, I can offer, you click the offer and assign option here. And this is going to give me a list of qualified and available employees to take this open shift. You'll notice that Rachel has plus three OT. That means that if I allow Rachel to pick up this shift, she's going to go three hours over her max time. So that might give her overtime hours or so on. So you can decide whether or not you want her to take this shift. I don't want her to. I don't want her to go over her max hours. I also don't want a couple other people to be able to take this shift, so I'm going to deselect Nellie and Randy. So now I offered it to those specific users. I can then notify these users by clicking the notify option here. Here I can input a message for them, and then I can send the notification, and that alerts the users I offered and assigned the shift to, letting them know about the open shift. Um, the first one to take it gets it, and it automatically moves within the schedule. So um, maybe Dave picked up this open shift, so that automatically moved for me. Um, so it's just a really quick and efficient way for you to get someone to pick up a shift that you need to have covered uh, for any day of the week. Kind of similar to how this feature works is our replacement feature. Um, so let's say we had um, Karen calling sick on Sunday. So we need someone to fill our shift. So if I click on Karen's shift, I can click there and select replace. Um, so the replacement feature is going to, again, give me a list of available and qualified employees to take over um, Karen's shift, so I can select these. Again, it's going to show me um, other available employees, but he would go seven hours overtime, but I need to have someone pick it up, so I'll take that risk. And then I'm going to initiate the shift alert. 
Again, this is going to send out email texts and push notifications to those employees. The first one to take it gets it, and it automatically moves within the schedule. So you can quickly get replacement for employee shifts, and you can quickly get employees to take, to take shifts that need to be covered. Um, so it's very efficient. Um, the last section here I want to go over is our hours, hours and budget section. So when you added your employees, you can input their max hours. Those appear under their names um, in the scheduler. So we're, the schedule is going to compare scheduled hours to the max hours. Um, so right now, Angela is working 35 out of her 40 max hours. Um, so um, if I schedule another shift, you're going to see that um, you would be going uh, over specific times. Um, so she'll be going over time. It'll turn red. So when it turns red, it alerts you to let you know you're going um, over their max hour time. So maybe actually don't schedule them. Um, you also get total hours scheduled here at the bottom per day, um, per week. So it's just another handy thing to make sure you're scheduling the right amount of hours. If you click on those numbers below their names, this is going to take you to our weekly projection. So you can see the total labor cost here at the bottom for each day and then also for each employee under their name. If you're inputting, if you need to view projected sales um, compared to your labor cost, you can input projected sales for each day of the week. And then that's going to tabulate correctly over here on the side in the weekly projection section. So it's just a nice way um, for you to get a ratio of your labor expenses to projected sales. All right, so that concludes um, the demo portion of um, my webinar. I have a couple of questions that have popped up. Um, feel free to just keep asking them, throw them out here. Um, it's going to be the best way for you to ask your questions and get them answered. Um, so keep asking them. So my first question is from Derek. Um, he says, if I begin working on a schedule, get away from a computer and get x out, does it automatically save my work? Um, everything you add is saved automatically. Um, you'll notice that there isn't a save option. That just means that whenever you input a shift, it's just automatically saved. So if you if you are if you are timed out of your session, um, all that information should be will be saved for you if it logs you out automatically. Um, Seth has a question. He says not all staff show up for a swap. Um, it, the swap can, it really depends. Um, it will only show qualified and available employees. Um, sometimes you'll think that you don't have enough employees set for that swap um, or available for it. Um, if you have a specific issue with it, and then Seth, I recommend um, emailing us at support at whenIwork.com and giving us the name of specific employee who's trying to swap a specific shift and who's missing from that swap. But many times it's because either they're not taken to the same position or they're already working a day that they want to swap. Um, so you just have to make sure to look at all those credentials. But our system will automatically filter out any of those so you're not having an employee swapping, let's say, like a manager shift with like a front desk and the front desk person's not qualified to work the manager position. So you just have, you just have to make sure that all the credentials are adding up. My next question is from Morgan. Um, she asks, the grid, the grid is people and shift focus. Is it possible to set up position sites on the x-axis side of the grid? Um, unfortunately, there's not a way to custom um, edit how, your, how the schedule actually works for you. Um, so the best way, like I showed you before, to like do positions is to just filter, use a position filter here, Morgan. So if you have managers, then you can just create the manager schedule from here. Or if you have um, floor, you can, you can schedule based by position. You can also schedule based by site. So if I, I have one site here, if I click there, um, this is going to show me employees who can work this site. And then I can toggle this to get my whole list of employees and create just that specific site schedule. Um, so I hope that is, more, is helpful for you, even though you can't change um, how they display within the X and Y axis of the grid. Um, but this is really handy, especially for the site feature. I'll show all my shifts. 
um, so I can quickly add a shift and it will automatically take it to site A if I'm filtered out to just view site A. Um, so my next question here, again, is, is from Seth. He said, can we tweak available staff eligible for a swap? Um, yeah, so when an employee creates a swap or drop request, it first is going to be sent to you, the manager, to approve it. So I'll show you what that looks like here. So if I view my requests. So I, I have a pending swap request. So um, this hasn't been approved yet. Karen, um, the employee who created it, just sent it to me. So then I see the list of the employees that she wants to swap with and shifts. So through here, Seth, I can um, deselect the specific ones I don't want them to choose. Um, but other than that, you can't add specific shifts you want them to swap. So you can, you can choose which ones you don't want them to, and, um, and then you can approve it that way. And then those employees will only get um, those, the notification about this swap request. Um, my next question here, is it possible to view the schedule by a month? Um, right now we don't have a month view, and the main reason for that is uh, we haven't exactly found the perfect way to have it displayed and work functionally, um, especially for our larger accounts. It is something that um, we are continually talking about and might add someday, but right now it's not an option. If you do want to view your um, schedule by month, um, the best way is going to be to use our calendar um, sync option. So if you can sync your schedule to either iCal, Google, or Outlook by using calendar sync up here from this dashboard. So if I click that, I can copy these um, URLs or subscription links into um, the calendar program I'm using, and you're going to view, you can view your um, schedule that way as well. Uh, my next question is, can we change the name of positions or sites? Within the scheduler, you, you can't change the name of the position, or, well, you can change the name of the site. So if you're using sites, you can click this pencil here, and this is going to allow you to change your site name if you need to do that within the scheduler. Otherwise, um, you can do it from the gear menu and going to the specific um, section where you need to edit and create new sites and positions. Um, the position name, you can also edit from here if you need to do as well. Uh, my next question is, what do you offer when you sign up for a membership? What do you offer in terms of ongoing support? Um, so with any membership, uh, you are offered the exact same features. We don't um, take any features out unless you're on the free plan. Um, so you get all the features everyone else gets, depend, doesn't matter which plan you choose. The support, um, we have ongoing support always. Um, the best support we offer is through our email. We're available every day. Um, we're very quick with our responses, almost always within an hour with your email with us. Um, we also offer a live chat option that's available to you. Um, so that is our ongoing support for you. Um, and if you need specific like help or need emergent, urgent help from us, we do um, pick up the phone and call you if that's necessary. Um, the next question here is, can we export payroll timesheets? Um, Seth, are you, I don't know if you're referring um, to the export and just when I work or if you're referring to the wage-based feature that offers specific timesheets. Um, but there is, um, within wage base, once you close out um, a schedule, sorry everyone, this isn't part of when I work. <laughs> um, within wage base, once you close out the time period, you'll see an, ex an option um, to export the information. Um, so my next question here is, we are an event company and would like to change position or site to event. Um, the best way for um, event companies is to use the sites feature. Um, the positions, I suggest leaving them, you know, specific, like if, I don't know if you're like a server type event company, like servers, bartenders, um, setup crew or so on to keep your positions that way. Um, if your positions differ for each site or each um, event you are working, then um, I suggest just adding all the 
possible positions you could um, use to schedule at that job site. With your sites, I don't recommend like changing a site this way. Um, I just recommend continuing to add all to add the sites that you're going to go through, and then when you're done using a site, you can delete it. Um, but the best way to make sure you get the right information and it flows efficiently is to add your new um, event locations through the sites section and add your new positions here just to make sure everything um, stays how it needs to and changes um, how you want it to change. Um, so my next question is, what's the difference between a location and site? Um, yeah, so locations create separate schedules. Um, whereas sites you can work within one schedule if you want to and sites locations are set like um, you're not going to change that location anytime like the address or the name whereas sites um, like for what I was describing with this event company he uh, she has specific um, sites her team works at each week or each day um, so I'll show you here how that works quick so I have two locations here, so this is going to give me my two separate schedules. Right now I've been working in the uptown schedule. If I move to downtown, this is going to give me a completely new schedule um, with my list of employees that are tagged to this. I have employees that are tagged to both, so I can see um, that they are already scheduled in different locations, so I don't um, double schedule them in two different locations. Um, oftentimes, users who use the location feature use it for their different departments within their company so that they can keep um, the separate schedules um, separate for each department. With the sites, and um, Morgan, this is going to answer your question about viewing the schedule by site. Um, so if I add, let me just see here. So once I add a site to a shift, so I can quickly do that by, so here's my shift. I need to edit it and then I can add a site. So I'm using site A. Then that site is going to appear on the left side. So once that happens, I can click on that site, similar to how the position filter works. I can click on site A and that's going to let me schedule by site, view by that specific site. So I need more workers for this site, so I'm just going to keep scheduling. And it's always going to take them to this site as long as you're clicked on it. Um, so I hope that um, answers the, your question for you, Morgan, um, and also for you too, Seth. Um, so my next question is, where do you paste the link to add your When I Work calendar to a Google calendar? Um, so when you're in your Google calendar, it's gonna you're going to see um, on the left side like a calendar option. You can like right-click it and add calendar subscription. Um, I guess that's the best way I can describe that to you. I recommend um, Googling that <laughs> if you need more specific details on how to add a subscription to your calendar. So um, my next question here, and probably last, I have a couple minutes left, is does the schedule hold a history so I can refer back from one holiday to the next? Yeah, so right now, um, all the information you input on your schedule is saved up to two years. So if you need to keep going back to view that information, you can do that. We also have an export feature. Um, so if you click on the tool section here and export your schedule, you can get your own um, hard copy of an Excel document of your schedule you've created and all your past. And this is also going to give you an hourly summary for you um, to view total um, wage for employees and total hours scheduled. So you can use a schedule export as well to view that information. Um, my next question here is, can we hide date columns if we only run events on Saturday and Sunday we don't need to see the entire week? Unfortunately, um, that's not an option right now. You'll, you'll have to view the full week. You can view in day view, Morgan, if that's more helpful. So if I click on Saturday, I'm just going to see Saturday's um, schedule. And all the filters work the same within here as well. Uh, my next question, my last question here is from Andy. He asked, can you use a 24-hour clock? Yes. So Andy, if from your name in the upper right corner, you can select app settings. 
And here you'll see an option to change your time format. So right now I'm 12, you can change it to 24. Make sure to click save when you're done making those changes, but that's the way that you can um, work in a 24 um, hour time format for yourself. All right, so I got through everyone's questions, which is great, and thanks for all the questions. Um, I hope I got them cleared up for you. If not, um, you can go to this Need Help option here, and this will take you to our customer support page. It will bring you to a list of support articles we have created, um, a list of training videos as well, and then you can also file a support ticket. So if maybe I didn't make it clear for a question I was trying to answer for you, feel free to email this within a ticket. Again, we get back within an hour almost always, so feel free to um, send us an email, and myself or someone from my team will respond to you um, right away. Um, so if you haven't done so already, please um, sign up for a free trial. It's free for 30 days. It's the best way to know whether or not When I Work is going to work for you and your business. Um, so sign up, test it out. I hope it works out for you. Um, so thanks for joining me today, and have a really great day.